So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, you, yeah, I would. Uh, um, I apologize for interrupting. <laughs> no problem. Um, so good afternoon. My name is uh, Enzo De Florio. I'm proudly a member of uh, ECHO and uh, the Global Brain Institute, and also a um, member of uh, Vito in their uh, remote sensing department. My presentation is uh, called uh, Service-Oriented Communities agent-based um, uh, systems, socio-technical systems modeling. I'm very fond of uh, resilience and yeah, uh, philosophy of resilience. Um, and uh, I, I look at different aspects. For instance, these aspects, even uh, organizational aspects, social aspects, philosophical aspects, whatever. Um, and today, it will be a mixture of all this, of all these uh, things. Um, I will present. I will be presenting a model for a smarter organization of uh, social services. So I will talk about different um, units, different of these units. But uh, going now to the real business. Um, this, this picture um, uh, shows a, a matter uh, in, in red and describes the fact that uh, we are living um, um, in, in times that are so, so much different from, from the ones that our, our fathers um, were experiencing. We have less resources, we have much higher uh, request picks, there's more people, everything is mega, mega, mega cities and things that was science fiction some while ago, like in 2000 AD, the, 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 the comic book, they, they were talking about uh, mega cities. Now, that it, now the, the mega cities are becoming more and more of a reality, but this means that there's a big agglomeration of, uh, of users. And this is uh, affecting everything, it's affecting all, all, all the infrastructure Structures, all the organizations. Um, politics. Big politics. Big too. Big big politics. Yeah, politics. Yes, yeah, certainly. Yes, yes. Also decisions and, uh, and non decisions. And non decisions are affected. Yes, yes, absolutely. And uh, I will focus in, in this presentation on two uh, particular uh, aspects, which are healthcare and, and crisis management. But the, the key idea is that, okay, the system was there since a long time, but now the environment has changed. So now we need to understand how um, um, our systems and organizations uh, match the new reality. And if, they, if we realize that there is not a good match, then we have to rethink them. We have to, to maybe start from scratch or start um, um, finding uh, new new um, ideas to start from uh, to, to, to create new way of doing new way of doing things so the nice thing of, uh, of this uh, uh, situation is that when the matter is in the red zone you start watching things in a different way so you, you, it becomes like a, a litmus paper that l reveals uh, uh, the the, um, the truth of, of a story or uh, it tells, it tells you um, actually how things are really going on. Um, for instance, what is the performance of a system, what are the limitations of a system, etc. So, uh, crises are always useful from this point of view. Um, in fact, when you are in the red zone, you start realizing that things that appeared to work because water was being delivered after all, um, we're not too, too much um, efficient because, uh, okay, there's a lot of uh, uh, leakage, uh, for instance. Uh, there's um, a lot of costs that are multiplied by, by the number of users are becoming more and more uh, uh, unbearable. Uh, so you, you, you start using, start realizing that you're using too many resources and uh, resources are not, um, um, I mean, they are, they are becoming um, more and more uh, valuable and uh, more and more scarce, and you have also problems of scalability. You, you realize that things that were working were, when the reality was limited are not working when, in this uh, larger uh, reality, in larger society. Also, if you want to, to tackle new aspects, for instance, um, for a healthcare system, you want to talk about uh, isolation of people and, and stuff like that, you start understanding that the, the previous the traditional systems do not deal with this kind of problems. They are completely um, unaddressing. They are not addressing these, these aspects. And they are very much difficult to change. You cannot modify uh, such a system in an efficient way. 
So we see that there are limits, and these limits uh, are structural. So, um, and, and this means that uh, we have to um, address this problem and try to find a smarter way. Um, so the, the, the big challenge, challenges that we uh, face, and uh, now I feel a little bit like a, a person that wants to sell uh, refrigerators to Eskimos because I'm saying these things to you <laughs> that are very much into this very same uh, philosophy, is um, finding a smarter way to address uh, these big uh, social uh, societal problems in systems like healthcare, crisis management, politics, and, uh, <clears throat> and, and whatever. But, but we have to understand, first of all, uh, how to, to, to start uh, dealing with this problem, how we rethink uh, this organization, which model are we going to use, which approach, which is the safest way to migrate from the, the status quo to, to, to something different, um, which tool to use, and so forth. So in my presentation today, I'm going to um, present a major stance uh, and then um, I will apply um, this, I will derive from, from this stance some uh, lessons learned. I will apply them to two cases, again, healthcare and crisis management, and we'll do some analysis, present some models and some preliminary results. So my, my very first uh, um, stance is that um, Every, every system is affected by the way it is built upon, I mean, the way it is designed. Um, it, it, it sounds um, um, something obvious, but in fact, every, every, um, every system, even a human being, the, the axioms that it, or he or she decides to, to put as the foundation of, of their life, uh, their lives, uh, create constraints and uh, create uh, possibilities. So it is based on, on this foundation that we develop ourselves as, as we are, and we, and we bump into, uh, for instance, um, difficulties or... or uh, so the, the major enemy sometimes, it's ourselves, and the way we, we construct um, our own limitation by creating axioms. If we are too much dependent on, the, on these axiom, axioms, this is a problem. And also our organizations are very much dependent because they are, they are not uh, clever uh, systems as ourselves, so they are uh, um, entities that have been built um, by, by us. Um, but th this, this um, dependency is very much true um, with all our organizations. And what we end up uh, is, is this, um, that our organizations, the, the limits of our organizations are structural, are, are due to this, the, the, the way that they are um, been um, built and, and founded. Um, this is a, a paper which I, I wrote with, um, with a colleague, and you can find a copy of the paper there. So, um, my stance is that we have to find new axioms and, and that are more powerful. The same way as uh, uh, when you have uh, general systems theory, you have different system structure. It can be a very simple system. Uh, okay, then you can do some something with, with that system. But up to some point, if you are in in the animal uh, class of beings, you can do this and this and this. Okay, but if you are a human being, maybe you can have you can add uh, new things. Uh, on, on top of that. So new axioms are, are required. And if we do keep on working with the wrong assumptions, with the wrong axioms, we end up with a fragile society. I will describe you now what I mean. Uh, so this is a page uh, from a site uh, of, um, of a Belgian SME called uh, Fifth Play. Um, they deal with healthcare. And uh, I like very much this, this, um, th this sentence. You know the fact people are living longer and longer, which is very nice, uh, but it means also that they suffer from uh, more and more uh, chronic diseases. So um, there is more and more a need to, to um, offer assistance, to, to offer care to, to, to a larger and larger audience uh, of, of Clients, let's say, and this means that healthcare is becoming expensive, uh, more, more and more expensive uh, uh, each and uh, every year, and uh, 
they, they have a prediction. Uh, it's a, we will soon be looking at the structural shortage of caregivers. And this is, um, uh, I think, very, very important. Um, let me uh, analyze why, because this is a consequence of one of the assumptions, one of the axioms uh, of uh, healthcare, of the, the current healthcare uh, organization. So uh, the healthcare axioms are based on two concepts, the concept of caregiver and care receiver. Caregiver is a person that produces care products. Uh, a doctor, a nurse, or something like that, they produce uh, uh, care products. At some point, there is a care receiver that needs one of these products, and basically, it consumes these products. Uh, for instance, I need one hour of the doctor. Um, and it's a destroyer of, of resources, because I uh, take this hour from, from the life of the person, and I use uh, uh, that for me. Um, so, um, Basically, we have here an entity which does an action, is, is active, and an entity in, in, in red which does nothing. It only selects. Uh, the only active uh, thing uh, he or she does is choosing the, the caregiver. And for the rest, okay, I'm here, do, do what you want. Um, so, in a sense, the, the only moment in which the producer and the consumer uh, and, and, and the, the customer, yeah, the, the care receiver, are in touch are during these, uh, these moments when the person is in need. Um, so there is no value co-creation. So in, 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 uh, there is no other conduct. I, I cannot have, uh, uh, for instance, uh, um, a moment where I and my, my general practitioner um, learn together what would be my, uh, a better strategy for me, for, for my uh, future living. Um, so there is no value co-creation. Everything is, is based on, on, on uh, the concept of, of products. And this is, in fact, the axiom of a product-dominant uh, uh, product uh, logic. Um, and what do those, uh, uh, those axioms uh, produce? They produce exactly the shortage of resources that was uh, described in, 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 that, in that page. Because now we have a few greens uh, here that have to deal with uh, uh, several reds. But now uh, the, the population is growing. There is a progressive aging. So this means that we have, um, in proportion, less and less greens and more and more reds. Right? Um, we end up with a, a system which is moving uh, slowly but surely uh, towards a, a threshold in which there will be uh, unmanageability, so a, a chaos, um, so the, the incapability of the system to supply service for everybody. <clears throat> and we want to avoid all, all this kind of stuff. An important uh, item, an important element that we have to uh, focus on in our discussion is the role of information. Often, the information in the traditional organizations is static. Um, sometimes it's, it's missing, often it's, it's missing. Um, sometimes it's even worse than missing. It, it's stale, it's old information, or maybe it's simply the wrong information. So this is a um, translation from, from uh, Italian journals that I uh, collected every once in a while. Um, so there was a, a girl. Uh, the, the girl had common cold. Um, they had a, pr a problem. Uh, they, they started looking for a solution. Okay, so the client starts uh, has a problem. The user has a problem. Then he starts looking for a solution. He starts querying the servers. Do you have any uh, intensive care unit? No. Okay. Do you have one? No. Do you have one? Yes. Okay. Let's go there. 200 kilometers. 200 miles away. In the meanwhile. Whatever can happen. For instance, the person can die. Can we afford to do this kind of thing now in this society with everything interconnected with, with this kind of, of technology? Do we have still to, to rely on a client that does a, a sequential query until he, he finds a server that satisfies his, um, his or her needs? I don't think so. That's why it's quite frustrating. Um, so eventually, a place was found, two hours driving, girl died, common cold. And, and this one is a 
person that uh, well, yeah, was aboard an ambulance, and the ambulance was looking for a hospital. So the system <clears throat> was not supplying information as to where the, 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 the assets had. No, no, it was hiding this information. There were even false information. Uh, like uh, someone said, OK, we, we can go there at Umberto Primo Hospital, because they, they have a, 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 a cardiac surgery room. Not true. The room was, was closed. So stale information. Person died. So it's, it's crazy, no? It's, last century could be something that could happen. But today, we have technology, we have internet, we have uh, and the persons are saying, yeah, for two weeks we have been informing all the hospitals. Yes, but the system as a whole, healthcare, doesn't work because it allows something, some entity not to be informed. While the system should be informed, should know the state. Or this one, newborn child dies before reaching a hospital, uh, difficulty in, in breathing. Um, so the doctors tried in vain to locate a hospital. So the moment the problem uh, showed up, you start looking for some server that has a product, right? And because everything is client side and product based, which means that persons are still dying today because of this. So it's something um, <laughs> the emergency service initiated the monitoring. So. Can, can you believe it? So, so the information is static, often missing, stale, or sometimes even wrong. You get there 200 miles away, and it's not what you expected to find. So we have organizations that are pretty much local. They only uh, deal with their own set of beds, devices, people, and so forth. They don't care about the, the grander picture. They are static, and, and we, we end up uh, in a great state of frustration because it looks like we are living in, in an obsolete yesterday. And this is what uh, Buckminster Fuller said in, in the 70s. Let me just focus on another case. Now we move uh, from Sicily. Those, those um, uh, papers were all from, from Sicily. And we move to uh, the United States. Uh, this picture uh, shows how our, our um, remote sensing is important. So this is a satellite uh, uh, image that um, captures uh, the phenomenon of Katrina, uh, which is one of the five deadliest hurricanes that hit uh, the United States. Uh, who was um, affected by, by this um, um, uh, event? It's a big event, so lots of uh, circles were affected. Uh, first of all, the people, the, the people of New Orleans were, were affected, individuals, the families, the communities, but also, okay, the shops, uh, uh, all the, the business organizations, of course. Uh, but uh, uh, also, um, the local responders, uh, of course, had to do something with the, the, the event. So uh, the police, uh, the fire brigades, the flood rescue teams, and so forth, were also affected. They had to uh, respond. If we um, look a little bit uh, farther away, the state um, of Louisiana had to respond to, to, to the emergency. And uh, in the United States, you have uh, um, state um, organizations um, called the Department of Emergency Management. Sometimes they are also called Offices of Emergency Service, but they are basically the same. Uh, for instance, in, uh, in, in California, um, there is a, a Department of uh, Emergency Management, which is uh, 590 people uh, that deal with the um, um, safety, I mean, the, the emergency um, procedures uh, in, in California, which is an important state from its point of view, because uh, sooner or later, the big one will, will hit there. and. Uh, it's um, a cost uh, to, to the United States um, uh, population of 80 million euros per year, only for the state of, of, of California. Dollars. Dollars. Dollars, yes, I apologize. I'm used to... Yeah. Okay. 
the wrong currency. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> but uh, of course, states are part, in, in this big Matryoshka-like thing, uh, states are part of a, of a federal institution, which is the United States. And until 2003, uh, the entity which was on top of this hierarchy of uh, emergency management was FEMA, uh, the F uh, Federal uh, Emergency uh, Management uh, Association, uh, no, Administration, yes. Um, which basically, um, until 2003, um, coordinated the different states, the responses of, of the different states. The cost um, per year is in, in the tens of billion dollars uh, per year. In, in 2003, something happened. Um, basically, it was two years after 9-11, uh, and um, okay, after 9-11, people, um, the politicians uh, thought that uh, something had to be done because, uh, okay, they, they had uh, they, this big terroristic attack, and uh, and so they created a new entity called Department of Homeland Security, which was something uh, which in 2003 was um, basically put as. Um, the top of the FEMA hierarchy. So FEMA was no more the root of the system. It was uh, just uh, uh, something immediately below, uh, which, which created a lot of disruptions. People said uh, that uh, FEMA, after that, uh, lost mas much of, it, of um, their agility and, and stuff like that. So th their performance degraded uh, very much. How much does it cost? Okay, last year it was six, $65 billion for, for, for this entity, Department of Homeland uh, Security. But okay, something had to be done, right, it was 9-11. So uh, we see that um, the, further we, we, uh, the farther we go from the facts, the costlier the system becomes. And if you just add another uh, element, it just costs you more. <coughs> So we have this big uh, um, pyramid uh, put upside down, in which we have two uh, big classes, the private uh, circle, um, so the people in the private organization, and then the responders, the institutional responders that go from the local uh, teams for emergency uh, up to uh, the Department of Homeland Security for uh, the United States. But how uh, did it fare? It was, a, a, as you um, know probably very well, it was a big disaster. So despite, uh, okay, United States, a big country, big money, etc., big disaster. <laughs> um, but, um, and this despite the enormous amount of money that flowed from, from the people to, to these um, departments and uh, administrations and uh, organizations and so forth. So we can ask ourselves why. Why did this uh, happen? And um, uh, an answer to this question is that, um, again, we have a case of product-based, um, uh, product-oriented uh, way of thinking. So here we have the, the, the private circles, the citizens, uh, the business organizations, the local business organizations, that are just considered as passive elements that needs to be rescued by the cavalry. Okay, so this is the cavalry. We are the active one. We come and, and save you. Um, so you don't, you, you, you know, at least in, in healthcare, you can choose your, your, your um, care provider. Here you cannot. You have to take the, the default one, which is, uh, the one that the government has, has decided for you. So there is a chasm in between that separates the, 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 the so-called passive side and, and the active side. And this is a product dominant logic. You have clients that consumes products, products um, that are um, created by the active side. And the two sides are only in touch when something goes wrong. If um, anything, uh, if, if there's no disasters, etc., everybody goes uh, their own way. <clears throat> so value is no co-created. In, in particular, uh, people are not um, participating to the idea of um, evolving towards a community ready to withstand crisis. They just know that someone 
is going to show up if something goes wrong. The cavalry is going to show up. So that's a uh, product dominant uh, logic, which was applied also in the hierarchy because uh, there was no inter-circle uh, value co-creation. Again, there were producers and consumers, even between uh, the different boundaries of, of the hierarchy, um, which means that the, the roles are static and predefined. What I'm expecting from you as a citizen is that you keep quiet, stand still, you don't do anything, you just wait for me to come and ask you, how are you? Can I do something for you? When it's your turn. And this is the, the point of view of um, uh, the rescuers in the traditional um, way. So uh, roles and values are predefined and static. There is no uh, collaborative sharing of knowledge and resources. And there is a, some, some strange effects going on, like uh, um, you don't know actually what the state of the system is. You, you um, people here were taking decisions without knowing exactly. So, for instance, they, 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 during Katrina, they uh, spent $4.5 uh, million dollars to buy ice to, to, to keep um, the corpses um, of the people. Uh, I apologize for uh, um, the argument, uh, the topic. But, mm, uh, and th this ice just melted away because it was needed uh, the moment it was uh, it was delivered because it was reflecting a need that was no more uh, real. It was a st stale information that was propagating through these uh, links in here. So we end up with a plastic, uh, fragile uh, organization. Zappa, uh, some plastic people, it's uh, plastic organizations as well. So you know, um, after the facts, the politicians, the power that be, um, tend to spend money and go to thinkers and, uh, and ask them what went wrong. They could have done it m maybe before the facts, but they uh, usually do it after the facts. So they went to uh, CARI, um, uh, an institution um, specialized in, in um, um, this kind of problems, and they asked to, to deliver, to, to study the problem and to deliver with uh, uh, some, some guidelines for the future. And, uh, and they came up with this famous uh, CARI 3 um, uh, technical report and that says uh, responders would have been able to do much more if the, the, the emergency response organizations were able to effectively use, collaborate with, and coordinate the combined public and private uh, efforts. And they uh, coined the term of community uh, resilience. Community resilience is very um, new, um, it is a very um, disruptive uh, element, which tells that you cannot do things product-wise, because you, ha you need to co-evolve um, together. So um, the people in, that will be in need and the people that will be the res rescuers um, need to learn together what to do next time and learn from experience and so forth. So this is co-creation, value co-creation, and also co-evolution. Um, so the lessons learned is that um, the more and more uh, we look at traditional organizations, we realize that they are all based on the same assumptions, which is product uh, dominant logic. So the same mistake. Uh, static definition of roles, of values, distinction between what is institutional, what is spontaneous. They even coined the term shadow responder. To, to, to refer to the people that were helping other people uh, in, in New Orleans. They were shadows, uh, ghost-like entities, because they were not part of the picture. They could not picture them in the organigrams and so forth. <clears throat> so, OK, new axioms are, are very much required and urgent, because we need to move from uh, the reality, which was uh, uh, depicted by uh, Mr. Foller, to the reality which is allowed by our technology, so an interconnected, dynamic, smarter organization which match 
uh, our new turbulent and resource scarce times. Okay, so uh, I uh, also um, tried to, to create new axioms, and uh, I have three. One of them is society. First of all, if you want to do something for society, society is not something that you have to put in the picture as, a, as an object, but it must be a subject. Uh, society is a, should be an integral um, participant to, to the solution. Because after all, society is a pool of uh, the most intelligent agents we have uh, thus far, so human beings. Uh, and if you are able to, to um, engineer their action together, uh, then you can do something very, uh, uh, very useful. They are even mobile. Um, so the, the challenge is to engineer ways to tap into social energy, so the ability of, of a society to serve itself, to use this enormous amount of uh, uh, mobile resource, resources. So for instance, the project Self-Serve, which is uh, represented today uh, by two students um, uh, here, um, um, is exactly going in this direction. Because uh, uh, you have, um, you, you're uh, dealing with a, a big problem, uh, the endemic of uh, diabetes in, in Morocco. And you are trying to, to devise ways to use social energy. Uh, because, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Morocco is also a very sparse um, um, environment. Yes. So um, it, it means that um, um, if you need to look for uh, an entity supplying a service, this can be very, a very lengthy procedure also. So... Um, um, yeah, the, 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 the centers like hospitals uh, and so forth. Um, also the circulation. Uh -huh. Yeah, also the circulation. So it is not easy to, to, to have um, a service from the hospital or an uh, instance ambulance. Uh, okay. So the idea of this is uh, making, uh, making sense of society and yes. helping each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of having, for instance, um, different pools of resources, uh, c considering them under a, a same umbrella and, and then distributing them dynamically, like an operating system can do um, in a more dynamic way. And this is being done uh, by you. <laughs> I thank you for this. <coughs> and uh, a second axiom is... Uh, um, the fact that we, if we want to go smarter, then it's better that we go service-oriented. Um, uh, because uh, service and, and product are two, um, let's say, the, the two extreme uh, ends uh, of, of the possible strategies that you can apply in an organization, I think. Um, so what is service science uh, and service system or engineering? It's exactly this. Organizing resources in a dynamic and optimal way. Um, so people, technology, organization, information, everything is uh, services. And these services that uh, can create and uh, deliver uh, value to customers, providers, and other stakeholders. So IBM uh, started um, promoting this idea in, uh, 2000, uh, in, in the year 2000, in early in um, yeah. So we, we see here uh, attribute dynamic versus static, and um, we have um, information that is not uh, stale and, and uh, uh, to be retrieved by the client, but it's live and, uh, and global and provided by the organization. Another important aspect is that the way things are organized now. The responsibility is of the client. You are in trouble. OK, you have to choose the hospital, for instance. Then it's your responsibility to choose the best hospital. While something more sensible would be that the system, that the organization, uh, which should have a complete view of, of all the hospitals, let's say, should prepare uh, an offer for you, <laughs> as you know very well. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah, the, the, the ignorant 
Oh yeah, he's not oh, able. Yeah, that's true. Able to show he has to rely on, on someone else's some intermediary. Yes, yes. That that on, on that they also have no uh, global knowledge, by the way. So, all right. Oops, sorry. Yes. Go away. Okay. And the third axiom is that uh, I think um, we, we need something better than hierarchies because hierarchies are uh, an old concept which, which uh, is inherently uh, introducing delays. Um, and uh, dynamic organizations would be much, much, uh, much better with the, ser with the service dominant logic. Um, in this new idea of, of a metarchy, um, the organization should be a catalyst. So something that um, identifies um, opportunities for uh, value co-creation and manifesting these opportunities to the, to the people in need. So instead of saying these are the products, you want uh, something, uh, choose between these uh, bottles, between these... Uh, um, cans. Uh, and, and instead, the system should prepare the best uh, response for you. Um, and also, metrics should be systems able to manage this dynamic configuration of people, technology, organization, and shared information. So, um, the model uh, I started from in, in uh, 2010 was, was um, um, not an original one, let's say, because uh, the starting point is just uh, the, the classic service-oriented architecture model. So, uh, you don't have um, a client uh, and a server. Um, you have, uh, okay, client and, and providers which publish uh, services that get into a, um, a shared repository called the service registry and can be di discovered based on the description of, of the service. Okay, so yeah, the idea is that instead of a, a producer and a consumer, we just have parties, and these parties are in a, in a sort of a community, and one of the members of the community has a special role, is the catalyst uh, uh, party, is the, is the a party that um, manages the, the service uh, registry, so takes note of everything that is published. A catalyst, as you know, is a, a person that precipitates an event, provokes or speeds up change or action. Yes. Yeah, the thing that the catalyst would be responsible for is identifying opportunities for synergies between the parties. So opportunities when the two parties could together create value. And then the catalyst would offer this opportunity to the parties and say, OK, there is this, this possibility. Maybe you can uh, make use of that. By party, I mean the people, of course, but also cyber physical systems in an autonomous sense, or even system of systems, maybe organizations. And they would publish their capabilities, their policies of intervention, their um, availability. Maybe I'm a GP, I'm available between 8 and, and 4 and something like that. Uh, location, very important. I'm a person, now I'm uh, here. And, and uh, this means that even if I'm a doctor, if I'm in need just of a driver, and you happen to be able to drive too, and you are close to the, the place where I need a driver, maybe I can ask your cooperation based on, on your location rather than your uh, match, um, expertise match, let's say. Um, so the, the parties would also publish events, like uh, a person with, on Twitter would uh, tell something is going on. And um, by some technological magic that today is very much possible, uh, the catalyst party would receive uh, this, uh, this, these events translated into a common language and would reason about these events, trying to optimize each and every um, objective, but also the social objective altogether. So trying, for instance, the costs to be kept to a minimum. 
So this is uh, the, the idea that uh, I, I proposed um, in, in 2010. Uh, an example, so uh, I have two parties, they have two requests, but at the same time they can provide something. Okay, and then I have a catalyst here. So you publish both what you can do and what you can expect. Okay, also the other one does the same. Many people do the same. And at some point, the catalyst um, takes these, uh, these um, couples that identify different parties and, and say, oh, okay, if I put this and this together, I understand there is a, there is a potential. Then I, I propose the potential, um, the, 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 the cooperation to the parties. And if this, um, uh, this was called by uh, Kellogg from IBM as social translucence. So we, we made it apparent. Um, the system made the opportunity apparent to, to, to the users. And if the users realize that, that um, actually uh, it does make sense, because of course there's a lot of constraints, the two people maybe must be in the same city, close to each other, the services must be timely, uh, in sync, in sync, and so forth. If all these things happen to be um, all right, then there is value co-creation. So this is an example. There is a, a person here that would like to, to spend some time chatting with someone. Is an elder, elderly person. He sits uh, uh, in her house. Uh, okay, the, the social security, the healthcare organization does everything for her, but she feels lonely. And the only thing that the organization can do is send a nurse. And a nurse, for, for that you need to pay. <laughs> and there's another person uh, elsewhere in another smart uh, home. Um, and this person suffers from, from uh, severe problems. In the smart house, uh, she is uh, safeguarded. She finds a sanctuary in, in her house. But She's confined in the house because of the way the system has been built, the moment she gets out of the house, the monitoring system are not there anymore. So she cannot be monitored if she falls, if, if something happens. So in a sense, she is confined to, to the house. She, she, she really would like to walk with someone. Now, we have these two entities that have these two um, needs. And if there's someone or something that takes these needs and, and possibilities and understands that if I chat with someone, I can do it maybe while I walk with someone. And if I'm with someone, maybe I become the sensor, a live, live sensor of that, that person. Then that person can get out of the house without uh, feeling in danger. Uh, jeopardized by, by the fact that uh, there's no sensors inside the house because there's Mary, which is a, a sensor that is going to call uh, the hospital if, if Anne falls. And at the same time, Mary can, can chat with a live person. So um, basically, if you reason semantically between uh, the, the similarities, between the, the points in common between what you submit to, to the system, then you can find synergies. I know that I'm selling, again, refrigerators to, <laughs> to Eskimos here, because you're, you're it's doing nice exactly. It's nice to hear it again. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to hear it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, one of the students, uh, one of the PhD students, the one who got a lot of uh, prizes and, and so forth, he designed uh, uh, this system which has a problem, is a centralized system. So there is a coordination center, which gets all notifications, which means that doesn't scale very well. If you have to reason semantically, um, whenever you receive a new notification, then it means that soon you start uh, lagging behind, because uh, you, you, you have to reason continuously about um, um, events uh, produced by, by the smart devices uh, in, in the different houses or uh, in, in the hospital in, in, and so forth. So um, the, we came up with this mutual assistance community. The idea is that something uh, goes wrong in here 
Um, okay, normally what you do is you have uh, the system which, um, like an accelerometer or a gyroscope, which uh, sends an alarm to uh, the doctor um, or the hospital, and then they have to do something about it. They have to send someone and, uh, and do something uh, for you. But maybe uh, there's a people around that can go and supply care before the hospital uh, comes to you. And so there, there is this concept of mutual assistance using uh, social, um, the, the power of the people. In the 60s, it was, um, uh, all people were talking about power to the people, but we can also tap into the power of the people for the people themselves. And uh, uh, yeah, this um, um, Dr. Hong San, um, did uh, his PhD on this kind of thing. I was a director of studies. Uh, okay, I got the idea and, and so forth. <clears throat> and he got uh, several uh, prizes, but I told this already. Um, so um, there's a number of uh, good things. The system uses uh, social energy. Um, it's based on, on service systems, so it tries to identify dual service uh, systems. Uh, it is. Uh, service-based and semantic-based, uh, so it reasons about uh, um, um, description, semantic descriptions of, of um, events and um, services. Um, simulations also prove effectiveness, but there is a, um, a yeah, okay. Um, if you want to know more, you, you can find uh, uh, here uh, a reference to this paper of, on social translucence. And, and, and uh, also, uh, I, I built a mathematical model uh, of this, which um, is available on uh, that paper there. I can give you the presentation, oh, but you're taping it, so. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but there are also um, minuses. So this system is not a method key. I mean, it's, it's a centralized system. So there is um, a lot of problems like a single point of congestions, single point of failures, and, and so forth. So the central point is, is a bottleneck. Um, so it's also a single level, which means does not match very well with a system like uh, uh, the emergency system uh, in the United States that works at different levels, city, state, federal, and, and so forth. <clears throat> How to deal with these minuses? Uh, you can do uh, something uh, which I will call here an enhanced service-oriented community. It's like, like before, but now we have protocols. Um, a protocol like fire. So there is a, an, an event called fire. Uh, this requires a number of um, uh, roles. Um, if you find actors that can be a fire squad, a fire truck, a driver, or an extinguisher, then you can fire fire. You can fire the protocol fire. And uh, um, so it's like um, 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 data-driven programming. So in, in uh, computer architectures, uh, you, you have um, algorithms uh, like uh, the Tomasulo approach, that, uh, in which you have uh, uh, an uh, um, arithmetical logical unit waiting for the operands to arrive. Mm -hmm. The moment the operands are there, you fire, and you do the operation. Same, same thing here. You have a number of operations that are waiting. Um, the arithmetical logical unit is the community. And uh, when a fire event occurs and the, the, the roles are available, you deal with it. You know, um, you ac execute um, this list of actions. Okay, so someone says, oh, there's fire here. Uh, this somehow gets to, to the catalyst um, party. He says, okay, fire. Then we have to do the fire protocol. Then we need to find this, 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 and this. Okay, so if you find the, the, the fire squad, the fire truck, the driver, and the extinguisher, then fine. How do you do that? You look at the capabilities, the policies, the availability and location. You associate this to the people that are registered in the, in the community. And if you find a match, then good. If all rows are found, then, then it's good. But there is a big problem here, which is this if. This is a big if. What, what if you don't find all the rows? 
Um, yeah. If not all the roles are found, then a new event is created in, in this system and is um, um, sent to the community that the current community is a part of. So if I'm the, the city of New Orleans and I cannot find in the city all the roles that are necessary to deal with event Katrina, then I go to state. <clears throat> and I say, for instance, uh, I have a driver, but I don't have the rest. Give me a hand. <laughs> so <coughs> what you have is something, something like, like this. Um, so um, you travel across uh, the system trying to identify the missing partners. But it's the system that does it for you. Not you have to find and query the different parts, which is crazy. Uh, every system has a partial view. But as soon as it recognizes that the, the current view is not enough to provide the service, it goes one level beyond where th that entity is expected to have a, a view on, on all the entities below uh, itself, on all the first um, um, level entities. So it is the organization that identifies a complex opportunity for value co-creation, which is, in this case, a five service system to deal with an event of type five. <coughs> so now, application studies and results. Uh, first of all, I have uh, studied the, the formal model of, of uh, one formal model of, of, of this system. I wrote um, uh, this paper, and if you want to, to have a look, uh, you can find a copy uh, there. Then I found geometrical and audio representation of the system, and I found that uh, it was modular, self-similar, the representation, I mean. Uh, even the, the, the representation uh, was, uh, uh, had a fractal dimension. So it was fractal, um, actually. And uh, I received from IBM this faculty award. Um, yeah, more information there. Can you explain why fractal is here coming? Yes. First of all, because in the, in, uh, intuitively, when you look at the previous picture with the triangle, that is exactly a Sierpinski triangle, all right? But I will explain also why in a moment, more mathematically, intuitively. Um, so uh, let me just give you an example. This one I wrote it yesterday. I hope I'm uh, uh, clear. So you take a multi-set uh, multi of numbers, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, for instance, OK? So uh, then you interpret them. You have two doctors. Doctors are the zeros. No offense uh, intended. Uh, two nurses, uh, a driver, an ambulance, and a smartphone. OK. Then you consider strings of numbers. You consider there's a, a doctor, then another doctor, then uh, they, they, yeah, they, they interact with the driver, and so forth. Order is important here. That you look at it as a pipeline, for instance. Um, then you consider, um, yeah, you interpret it as a, um, a string which tells you which part of a community is fired by an event and which part is not. Uh, how I do that, uh, okay, um, if, you, if you consider this um, as, a, as a permutation, you see that, uh, um, okay, these numbers go less and less, and here there is a, a, an element that uh, um, violates the, 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 the order. Um, this means that this part, w when you create permutations of, of this element, this one turns. 1, 1, 3, 4, 1, 1, 4, 3, 1, 3, 1, 4, and so forth. And this one stays the same. Right, this gave me the idea of this less left-hand side as the part of society wh which keeps, uh, uh, which stands still. And the other part is, is the part of society which is mo um, moved <laughs> um, by, by the, the, the event. OK. Um, yeah. Right. What's this? Hmm. Now, if I consider all the possible uh, sub-communities of a community, 
Um, it's like considering all the permutations of all the full world in a C. And if you map the subcommunities in a 3D space, you get nice pictures. And if you point, uh, you turn them into uh, notes, you get music. That's not nice <laughs> music anyway. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> Okay, I don't know if I can go to the internet uh, with this one. I don't think so. Or, or maybe, should maybe be, yes. Uh, should be online. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> maybe. Uh, maybe. Uh, okay, maybe okay sure. fantastic. Yeah. So let me just uh, show you an example. This is. Um, which is produced by, by considering the different um, sub-parts of our community. Mm -hmm. So this is the music of cooperation. <laughs> <laughs> the instruments, I chose them. And uh, okay, all the rest is, is, is very steady. It's no, no rhythm, it's just... Um, uh, I can show you this other one. <laughs> so here the rhythm emerges because this is only this is there is no rhythm, but what you feel as rhythm is is, is a consequence of, of of the choices of the algorithm. Yeah. Okay, let's go back. <laughs> How can I stop this um, file exit? Okay, thank you. And I can go to the presentation. This one? Or? Ah, this one, thank you. Okay. So, if you are into uh, weird music like I am, then you can... Uh, have a look at that uh, uh, <coughs> set of... Uh, but you know, if, if I just can jump in, uh, sure. if you had uh, like a musical composer, you know, thinking with you systemically, you could like create notes and sounds that would really like sound beautifully if the cooperation is very good, you know? Yes, and, yes. And, like th and then the you would have this, you know, aesthetic musical uh, feedback from yeah, 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 because yeah. like uh, if it's beautiful or not, it's like the better one to say it. <laughs> but true. but yeah. if it if 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 it was you know like uh, some some real composition put in uh, in yeah. terms of notes, it might be you know. A yeah, very yeah, nice, yeah. Nice Schoenberg thing. was yeah. uh, uh -huh. the first one mm -hmm. who, who mm -hmm. had this idea that um, after all, uh, a composition can be a, a dynamic system yeah. which is defined only by the the, the, the single point, which exactly. is the theme. Exactly. The, the, the yeah. So you yeah. take that and then you transform it. Yeah. Dun, dun, yeah. Dun, dun. Yeah. All the rest is done yeah. by the algorithm. Uh -huh. So, so um, it's, it's cool. the most compressed yeah. system there is, yeah. only the algorithm be and, 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 the, and the initial and the theme. Uh -huh. okay. Does um, it mean also when the cooperation is really not good, it is uh, it's, it's reflected in that song? It should be, it would be cool. <laughs> uh, atomic or, or whatever else? This could be a very interesting um, application of, of this concept because yeah. then it would be a signal. Yeah. And people don't want to hear it anymore, so they yes. go to work. <laughs> At the moment, it is like this. It's always been a. If I it would be a detector if it is well working. Yes, yes. The harmony, the, the um, harmony between yeah, the parts exactly. could be uh, expressed. Uh, if it is not this, what else could be the use of this uh, space? Um, what else? Um, <laughs> that's a good but question. But this one was good, you know. Like, 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 let's stick with this one. Um, in the seventies, you had this um, uh, these concerts in which you had. Um, psychedelic lights <laughs> that were following. So if you had a, a mixer, a mixer is a set of rows, 32 uh, entries that uh, are the guitars, the, 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 the drums, and so forth. This system would react to the entities that are playing a role. Mm -hmm. So when some is silent, it would end up with 
some permutations and some representation. Well, while some um, uh, when a, a part of, of the band uh, was active, that would be um, generating a one mm -hmm. <laughs> in, in the corresponding entries, and uh, so these were the roles that uh, would be depicted. So it would be maybe useful in a video. On, uh, but I don't know if it would be a successful video. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not. Okay. <clears throat> Um, yes, I proposed this idea to, to a person, but he never replied uh, into mm -hmm. music. Um, hmm, it's um, stuck or oh, what? Um, hmm. Resilience is an important uh, It won't depend on where I know the answer. It was very important. <laughs> Okay, let me see here. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so for instance, uh, uh, one of the properties I have here is um, this one, but uh, it's not very much. Mm, mm, oh, mm, I'm sorry. You cannot see it uh, here. Mm. I don't know if you can see it. Um, mm. No, not even oh. here. community. This is another community. This community, this seed, is contained into this seed. And uh, the same way, the, the phenotypical representation, so the, the 3D uh, system there on, on the left, is included in the uh, system on the right, on, on the, uh, in the representation on the right. So there is a, a conservation of uh, um, of, of this property. Now, modules uh, of, of the seed uh, can be identified in, into uh, modules of the um, representation. But I don't understand the order. What does the order mean exactly? The order? The order of the symbols. Um, uh, it, I, I interpret it as, a, as in a pipeline. Like uh, a person does something and then hands uh, the next one. Yeah, and but that assumes <coughs> that you have only one sequential process. Well, usually you will have several processes going on in parallel. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's um, it's one of the limitations uh, that uh, um, I, I realized to, to have introduced in one of my axioms that. Uh, ah, <laughs> so the permutations <coughs> are a question of finding the right sequence. Um, no, the, the, the problem is that the way I, I, I created the, the representation, then I realized that the order was important. But in, in fact, in, in real life, uh, you can apply it also to, to... But this would mean that several points would match, would map to the same... Um, um, to the same group, the same team. But you know what... Uh, I use this formalism of chemical organization yes. here, which is kind of a generalization of graphs, hypergraphs. And I think with hypergraphs, you can express much more ways of matching things together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, this is, after all, just a single linear order. No, so no, limited no. In what you can yeah, that's true. But even such a simple thing already gave me some, some ideas, because uh, um, I, I could find that even with such a, a, an oversimplification, let's say, you had properties like this one, so the, the, the conservation of modularity, which I called here. And here I have to go to the next. Can I have a question? Oh, okay. This, this, 
distinct by x, y, z, coordination system, that has nothing to do with it. Yeah, it's, it's x, y, z. So when you take the community with that uh, string there, you can cut it into three uh, set of um, 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 yes. And you call them x, y, z. <laughs> you map them into integers, and, and, and that's it. Or you call them nodes. Yes. And you assign them to an organ, to a symbol, a, a, a drum machine, or, and, and, and then they sound like that. Okay. And uh, um, yeah, I have, um, for instance, this one. If you take a look at uh, these two uh, um, concepts, let's say, these two uh, representation, um, this one seems to be, uh, I mean, this one seems to be a refinement of this one. So this one seems to be more, uh, um, less, deta uh, less detailed. And this one is, is more detailed, right? And this is exactly what, what I have here. So the left-hand side is a refinement of the right-hand side, which for me, um, I, I described it in, in, uh, in this paper in here, is a way to, to um, to describe the, the concept of monad in, 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 uh, in Leibniz, in, in geometrical terms. Because we have here these communities, so sets of people, right? Um, if you keep on adding doctors, so numbers zero, you get more and more and more detailed view of the system. Uh, the, the way you represent it, you move from a picture like this to one like, like this, and then even more and more detail, to the point that you can uh, get closer to it, and you see uh, still the same properties uh, self-repeating. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Get closer to it, closer to what? Uh, when you are a, a visual uh, observer in this 3D state, and you move uh, to, to, to the center, to the center or, or some, some or place. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yes, you typically move to, to, towards the origin. Uh, then you, you start uh, um, understanding that there are replicas of the whole system at different sizes. And, um, yeah. Um, and it's related to fractals. Yes, exactly. Because they are self-similar and you can get a fractal, you see that there's a fractal dimension. And also, this is the same concept, for instance, the, an organization for healthcare considered um, at the limit. If you had an infinite number of doctors, you would end up with a system like that, for instance. With less doctors, like less and less, you get um, a coarser and coarser images, uh, core image. Um, so in a sense, um, you can get the concept, but you cannot touch the, the real thing. Uh, like in a fractal, you have um, programs that show you fractal, but at some point, you cannot get um, I mean, the arithmetic uh, limit of the computer is, is uh, uh, encountered, and you cannot get more information. And uh, I see this as a as a as a way to, to refer to what Leibniz considers a, a, as a as a monad, because uh, it, it's a system. Um, it, it's a yeah, a monad is like an algorithm. Monad, M-O-N-A-D, monad, is um, the, uh, think of it as an algorithm. And you have different implementation, like a, a car. Okay, you have the concept of car. Hmm. But you have the first car, which was one uh, in which uh, uh, was an animal which was carrying the, 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 the car. <laughs> And then, oops, sorry. And then you had the um, uh, the car of of the early ni uh, nine hundred, okay, nineteen, uh, okay, twentieth century, and so forth. So um, and now we have autonomous cars and so forth. But it's still called a car. The name is the same, right? And the function is more or less the same. But um, the, the 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 concept tends towards a more and more refined uh, version. So there's a conceptual unity that changes. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, and I see this as a, a geometrical interpretation of the system. You cannot see what an, a perfect organization will look like, because you cannot add indefinitely a uh, number of uh, nurses, doctors, and so forth. But you get something uh, like a, a, a limit, a process um, that goes uh, 
um, mathematically. So, so the, the real thing is at the end, but you cannot touch it. Okay, this is uh, another um, example of a system which you can, you can see in here the self-similarity also of the system. And here it is another one, another one. Okay, um, something different now. Um, um, I applied, um, together with uh, several people, uh, applied this to a Flemish um, project on uh, healthcare called uh, Little Sister. It was based on low-cost, non-intrusive telemonitoring solutions, um, little sensors that were actually uh, mice. Um, so 80 uh, pixel uh, elements that you can find in, 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 uh, in the ma in, uh, in mice. Um, and you can have them uh, equipped with a battery that uh, lasts... Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, you speak about biological mouse or technological mouse? Technological. Oh, okay. Technological. Uh, oh, that's why they have a camera <laughs> in, in them. Normal, normal biological mice have no camera inside. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, a person, uh, the person that uh, created this project had this idea, we could use uh, those little um, uh, camera in these uh, technological mice. Um, robotic mouse, actually. Uh, sorry? Robotic mouse. I, would, I would not refer them to a robotic <laughs> but, uh, and, and, and basically they were using them because uh, uh, if you want to uh, um, use them as, as cameras, their batteries long, are long lasting. You can have uh, one year. So you, you put them in a smart house and um, you can leave them there. There's no need to change the battery for one year or so. So And, and also the pictures that they take are good enough to uh, derive information like the person has fallen or is moving from the kitchen to, to um, the sofa, but they are not um, such that you um, get the identity of the person. So they are not Big Brother, and that's why it's called Little Sister. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good idea of uh, the guy who... Um, Richard Clayhorst. Um, and we developed a multi-tire distributed architecture um, in which these are the sensors, uh, the images taken from the, the mice. <laughs> you, you <laughs> let me think of a mouse that takes the camera and takes a picture. Okay, and uh, um, there, these are specially designed low resolution sensors, okay. And this is how it looks like. Again, it looks like a, a Sierpinski uh, uh, triangle. So you have the raw components of the systems, that they are organized into smart rooms. The rooms are part of a smart house or smart flat. The, the smart flat is part of a smart building. And then you have upper layers where you have uh, smart hospitals, smart regions, smart cities, smart smarties, and <coughs> so forth. So, um, the idea is that you have this hierarchical federation which reflects the, 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 the deployment environment and uh, all the resources are wrapped uh, with Java as uh, manageable uh, web services. Uh, we use a standard PubSub mechanism. This was done by a student uh, of, of mine that is going to defend his, his PhD um, hopefully by the end of this year. Um, and there is also, uh, yeah, using standard libraries and so forth, it's possible to uh, seamlessly integrate it with, um, uh, for instance, .NET um, application, external application. So um, the system on top of, of the, uh, the triangle there is a, a domotica uh, system uh, create by, created by Nico Systems, and it's based on .NET. But we were able to, to exchange uh, information with that. Um, so and each service group should have hosted a catalyst, a, mad a middleware component. Uh, we actually ended up with a project which was half successful. Um, okay. 
Um, okay, another thing that we did is multi-agent uh, simulation. Um, so these are systems that are very difficult to, to uh, try with real people because if you make a mistake, uh, the life of people can be uh, endangered. So it's much better to use uh, uh, multi-agents, for instance. Um, and uh, we had a case study based on false detection. So um, the, the idea is that uh, okay, if you have um, uh, false, um, it, it's very important that the system reacts correctly and uh, uh, tells uh, that the, the, a person has fallen. If you don't uh, react quickly enough, elderly people often die because of, of this, if you don't react within the first uh, couple of hours. Um, so what you can do is you take two fault detectors. Okay, I take a, um, an accelerometer and a, gyro, or a gyroscope. But as soon as you do that, immediately you start having a lot of false positives. You have less false negatives, but you pay them off with more uh, false positives. The social cost of the system goes up. Because for every alarm, you have to call the ambulance, people have to come. So what can you, you do uh, with, with this? Uh, we, we designed, uh, uh, I and a student of mine, uh, Master of Science student, uh, a multi-agent system um, simulation with NetLogo. We published uh, two papers. It looks like, like this. Uh, you have uh, the usual uh, front end of, of NetLogo, and you have your entities there, which are the people uh, in their houses, then the hospitals, then ambulances, and, and so forth. You measure the cost of the system by the time the ambulance is running and other assumptions like that, and you get into a situation like this one. You have um, better false uh, negatives rates, but not because of the system, but just because you use two sensors. It, 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 it's intrinsic. And uh, you have a higher number of uh, handled requests. This is important. You can do uh, more with less uh, resources. Here we did use uh, uh, our system. So we move from a this situation. Compared to what? With the traditional uh, solution. So a solution where if there is an alarm, you have to deal with it by dispatching someone uh, to, to deal with the situation, be it a real situation or a, a fake one, so a, a true positive or a, or a false. Mm. But this is not you know, the only observation of the rock. The rock is reaching us, but the rock is mm -hmm. proportion on uh, this motion. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, uh, I'm not an expert, I don't know this, but the um, I will. Uh, the quality of the, of the uh, distinction uh, on false, positive, false, negative. Yeah, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a very tricky distinction because um, there is a penalty which is um, associated to false negatives and false um, yeah, positives and you have to choose uh, mm -hmm. not only from the point of view of uh, the cost of the system but the safety uh, uh, and so forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, yeah, you have reduced social costs. So uh, if you have... Um, um, the traditional solution, you spend uh, 70 units, whatever they are, and if you uh, have um, a system like ours, you spend um, um, about... Um, what is the meaning of the abscess I see number? What is, the um, is the number of volunteers that you use. Um, you see that this is very important. Uh, thank you. Um, this says that in a community where five people are giving a contribution to ev everybody, only five people in, in this uh, set of um, communities that we, we chose was enough to get a, a, dr a drastic improvement. So you don't need everybody to be altruistic. So if I understood it well, what it does is it asks volunteers in the neighborhood of the person Perfect. that has to be monitored to check whether it's Perfect. a false positive. 
Exactly. Instead of uh, relying on uh, presence. Instead of sending an, a, an ambulance with a specialized person, which would cost a lot, we first ask the neighbor to go and check. Yeah. What, I, what we do in actually is we, we call, uh, nevertheless, the ambulance. But oh. the ambulance will stop the moment uh, uh, someone says, uh, ah, it's a false, uh, false positive. Okay. Because we don't want to risk uh, uh, yeah. the lives. And we were uh, thinking, if we want to try this with real life, we have to run it in parallel with the traditional uh, system also. So we nevertheless run. But the ambulance goes back when, uh, uh, yeah. And um, the waiting times are uh, drastically reduced with just five uh, volunteers. And again, this is very important with false, uh, false detection because uh, uh, with, um, with false, um, all the events happen very, very quickly. I mean, in the first two hours, if you intervene within the uh, two hours, um, th there is a huge uh, percentage of people that would survive. After two hours, two hours is a threshold beyond which um, lives are becoming, uh, are being lost uh, much more quickly. Okay, in conclusion, we have novel axioms to create the smartest systems, but these are just my axioms and my ideas. And uh, for instance, uh, um, Global Brain Institute is very much busy with grander systems and more uh, advanced uh, systems uh, than this. But I was wondering maybe if this one could be one of the modules of a grander to experiment with different solutions, for instance. Um, an important aspect is that we have a shift from a product dominant logic to service dominant logic. We don't do this. If we don't do this, we are we are uh, at a loss. I mean, we, we are going to, to uh, get into structural limitations. And uh, the use of social energy is very much important. We cannot waste that energy. Uh, Meter keys are also very important. The idea is that we need to scavenge for uh, value, which is very much present and abundant, as you teach me. And uh, you just have to discover and propose it. Um, just, OK. <laughs> it's not that easy, but it's important. Um, future work, the way I see it, is um, um, the fact that the organization should orchestrate the optimal uh, value proposition, so choose between different options, so I have enough um, performance, a high performance, to choose between different um, solutions, even ranking different uh, solutions based on how uh, they, they behaved in the past. And, and especially, the organization should take responsibility. This is very important, also from the point of view of uh, our insurance companies. Now, if something goes wrong, um, the hospital cannot be appointed responsible. Right, okay. Um, I was looking for uh, a hospital, I didn't find it, uh, the person died. Ah, what a shame. Newspapers. Okay, but the hospital was not uh, wrong, and, and the Ministry of Healthcare and uh, stuff like that are not responsible. Wrong. <laughs> they should be responsible, because the system now has the possibility, I mean, the, 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 the overall organization of things, uh, has all the possibilities to orchestrate things optimally, and if they do not, they, they, they are uh, uh, neglecting their duties. So the organization should take responsibility, and the user should never be left alone. Uh, actually, they should be part of the solution. And also, another important aspect here is that we have fixed protocols. Fire is a protocol which is predefined and has a number of roles. And why not? We should create new ones uh, and let them evolve. Um, all this kind of stuff, which I'd like, uh, would love to do, and at the moment I'm not very much able to play with. And uh, yeah, future work also resilience and anti-fragility of uh, the community. So uh, the two entities, uh, the one in need and the one supplying services, are learning should not repeat the mistakes. Let's say should um, um, evolve after the facts together co-evolve. And um, other work is I would like to extend this idea of um, 
uh, fractal system as monads, geometrical interpretation of what is uh, in, in Leibniz a system that continuously evolves. Why the world is the best of all possible worlds according to Leibniz? Because we have evolution. We had cells, we had amoebas, and by magic we are now with human beings. And maybe there will be something better and better and better. Why? Because the system in itself is um, attracting towards a better and better solution. And why is this? Sorry? Why is this? This is the most important question. <laughs> so why is the system attracted to a war by evolution? Um, to, why, is this? why is this? Because uh, the more uh, we have two, two aspects in, in every in every system. One is the blueprint of the system, the algorithm, and the second is the way the system is built, the 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 the, 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 the technology. You have concept of car, okay, the algorithm of car, and then you have the way car is built, and if you improve the way it is built, the different um, manifestations become more and more perfect, meaning that the whole perfect perfect in terms of what you get more from the union of the different parts. In Aristotelic term, the whole is better, is greater than the, the single part. But this but this excedence, this, this um, plus, can be different. If you have a, um, I don't know, a crack nut or something like that, you have a simple system. You take a metal bar, another metal bar, you put them together, crack, you have this added value. Okay, if, you, if it becomes more perfect, I don't know, <laughs> it will be more performant, you would need less uh, force, less strength to, to open, to, to crack a nut. But not much beyond that, right? Um, while in, in a system like a human being or a society, the, the, the quality of an emergence will be grander and grander the more the technology behind supports it. And what GBI is doing for instance, is creating a new fabric, if I'm, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, that allows to do the things like healthcare, crisis management, many other things, in a more advanced way. Why? Because you get more. The, the quality of emergence is such that less people die. There is a better distribution of the resources, and the resources are less and less, so it's more and more important, and all those kind of things. So it's so like, like as if you are applying a concept of self-actualization to social systems. Yeah. Not so, uh, not autopoesis, like repetition, but like getting more perfect. Exactly. Yeah. Ev evolution. Same. That's yeah. why I think that evolution, as we uh -huh. were discussing uh, th this afternoon, is um, something which is uh, sometimes uh, associated to Darwin. But as you said, uh, Kadal, uh, it is something that is much um, earlier than, than, than Darwin. And for instance, Leibniz has its own, his own laws. He, he, he constructs a model of a world that evolves. But you, in biology, the evolution is uh, taking place since two or three billion years. Or yeah, yeah. Since it's done a good job. Very, very despite the presence of certain beings um, in the United States, but yeah. all in all, it's, um, it's done a good job. Uh, I think one of the misunderstandings <coughs> many people have about evolution is because in Darwin's theory, the emphasis is put on competition. Yeah. Like, I will win because I'm better than you, but you lose odds. That's the idea of the zero-sum game. The winner takes all the loser loses out. Yeah, yeah. What evolution also implicitly done, does is search for positive sum gains. If both can win, right. it will be preferable for evolution because both will win. The if you have to fight for a particular good, I mean, I was just thinking about an example of friction. So friction is a negative sum game. Suppose mm -hmm. that you have two animals, let's say two lions, that are fighting for the same antelope. 
in the end, maybe both will get half of the antelope, but in the end they will also have quite a lot of wounds and have spent quite a lot of energy fighting. If they could have agreed among each other to divide it immediately in two, the friction would have gone. But the synergy is when together they are able to kill a bigger animal than the antelope, right. and they both get the equivalent of the antelope by collaborating. It's an ecosystem. It's the building of, 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 a, of a nucleus of a, of a new ecosystem, let's say. Am I correct? The concept of, of ecosystem is, is precisely this uh, synergy, this collaboration. Yeah. The synergy is that together they can do more, typically because the one can do something that the other can't and vice versa. Like so in I the example you gave about the lady who wants to walk and the lady who wants to talk, together yeah. they can have a walk and a talk and they're both happy. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And it's um, precisely this this concept uh, that um, leads to to a greater, an added value that was not present in the parts. Yeah. And this is um, this is what um, also Leibniz took from from uh, Aristotle, and um, it is um, it spread in, in all his. Um, is a, is a system, this, this idea that um, we evolve better and better. Um, that, that's why this is the best of all possible world. Because things can be bad for me, that I'm now doing something suboptimal, for instance, or for you. But as a whole, the system gets and s s takes the concepts, takes some concepts, and at the s next cycle, the concepts are refined. There is a, an, an, uh, an extra quality of emergence that uh, um, can be identified in, in the holes that are built with the same recipes, with the same um, monads. Okay, and uh, we shall see. It's um, <laughs> my last consideration because I really <laughs> don't know if this will be future work or not. So thank you very much for your attention. Is the FSO a fractal social organization? Can you move it to the previous slide because it was a good summary, I think. Um, this one? Yeah. Uh, so <coughs> the public dominant logic to service dominant logic, I understand in general, but can you explain precisely what makes the difference between the public and the service? Yeah, if you want to have a, um, something to drink, mm? you go to the bar. Mm. Okay, you have products there. You ha are thirsty. But you can take a Coke, orange juice, pre-packed, 33 centimeters, or mm, 29 centimeters. It's you I have to decide the product to accommodate for, for your needs. But I would like just a water and a glass of uh, a glass of beer. No, no, these are the products available. 33 centiliters, 29 centiliters. And these are the products that are available. Um, I, I have um, a need. I need to. to I, I feel bad. I feel bad. I need to to, to go to a hospital, maybe. Ah, okay. Wait a moment. Which hospital do you want to go to? A, B, or C? I, I don't know. I, uh, no, 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 these are the products that are available. A service is, I have a problem. Okay, description of the problem. These are the, the elements that are in, uh, in uh, hospital A, B, and C. Answer, A and C together can give, this one can give um, people. This can, be can give devices, and together they can supply you what you need. So, um, an answer to this particular need that you that you have. So you define a service as a more <coughs> integrated, more flexible solution to whatever your problem is, where you don't have to pick pre-packaged things, but the solution is assembled. Assembled. Is this is depending on your yeah. specific needs. Yes, yes. Because I was thinking also of another example. I don't remember who it was. <coughs> there is a Dutch designer who also proposed a method. And he worked, among others, with Philips. And then the idea was that Philips, instead of producing lamps, as they traditionally have been done, products, 
that they should provide the service of writing. That means yeah, you subscribe yeah. to some kind of a contract with Philips that says, I want my building to be always uh, lighted in the most efficient way. You provide the electricity, the lights, the lamps, and whenever one of the lights doesn't work, you are make, make sure that the lamp is in place. So you're buying the service of getting light when you need it, you're not buying the lamps. Exactly. Uh, St Stephen, Stephen Krakens, our uh, director, gave a presentation a couple of days ago, and, and he said that everything is moving towards this service, uh, space as a service. You don't need to launch your own satellites. You just make use of, of the services that one of the uh, satellites that are already there, maybe, or cars. Cars are, are mobility as a service. Yeah. I, I, um, BMW is uh, soon to, to, to launch um, a new business model in which you don't buy the car, but you buy the, 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 your share of, of mobility and things like that. So this is what... Um, he was uh, telling me. Well, what's the advantage of that view is that there is much less waste. Yeah, exactly. Things. And also, because in the case, like, for example, of the producers of cars or the producers of uh, lamps, it is to the advantage to sell your products that don't live too long so that you buy new ones. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. If they are uh, service providers, it is to the advantage to have their products function as long as possible because they are paid for the service, mm. not for the product, so they should yeah. make sure that the products stay functional as long as possible because then they have the least cost in repairing them. Exactly. Also, if they have a, an, an, an ecosystem that uh, supplies us the elements of, of, uh, of a machinery or a tool or something, then they also know um, from the very first start what to do when something needs to be replaced. I mean, instead of sending, considering something like garbage, mm -hmm. it gets into recycling to the right entity, which, okay, uh, I, I create motors, I'm Toyota, behind me there's uh, 10, 15 suppliers of, uh, okay, now I have a, a motor and I have to return it. But while I take this home and I break it into its, into its parts, I can also schedule each part to the, 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 the supplier, the original supplier, who's going to know how to best recycle it. <clears throat> it's, um, so it's like uh, thinking in terms of processes instead of thinking in terms of objects is more intelligent and exactly. you know, less wasteful and so on. Objects uh -huh. create waste. <laughs> So that's a nice way to put it. Yeah, I mean, it's an it's application to the economy of process thinking, process <coughs> thinking. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. The economy has been far too much based on object thinking. Products, objects. products. You need wow. to own. Um, you fixed, don't need yeah. to own an object as yeah. soon as whatever need you have is fulfilled the moment you, uh, you need yeah. to fulfill it. If you if a car stops in front of your door the moment you need transport, you don't need to go a car that sits in the garage most of the time. My, my boss uh, gave uh, the, 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 the idea of CDs. He, says, he said, uh, at my age, we wanted to own the CDs. But now we have Spotify oh, with course. things like that. We yeah. just need the service. We want to, yeah. mu to have music. Okay, we just pay and, and get that item of music. We don't need to own the piece of plastic or because it ultimately it will become garbage. <laughs> yeah. Music, movies and books are the best examples of, 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 of this already yeah, happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am but selling my CDs. You are selling my CDs. I want to get rid of I sell is anyone still buying stuff? Yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> I, I, I think you'll have to pay someone. <laughs> yeah, one of the <laughs> one, one of the things that is uh, most difficult to sell are old video cassettes. Don't pay for old video cassettes. <laughs> okay, please. So, for this system, please. Yeah. Yeah, for this system, how can we make sense of using the uh, internet, like social media, Facebook, WhatsApp? How can we use the information published every day, every second, for this service? 
I, I think that these are very important ways to um, get access to this um, knowledge, which is uh, spread uh, among the people. Um, so, so suppose uh, you have uh, Katrina again. Uh, the people uh, at the bottom of the hierarchy have no idea of what went uh, on in the different parts of the system. But if they have a system that would filter keywords on, 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 on tweets um, and would derive from the frequency of the tweets, uh, from, from the, the content, the appearance of certain keywords, that there was a situation developing, they would shift their attention to a certain area where the, the tweets were originating and, and trying to understand and uh, maybe anticipate a, a problem. So um, the fact is that we have a network of mobile agents that uh, uh, with social media could be um, orchestrated in, two, in different ways. In the simplest way, you don't control but you just observe. So these can be sensors. In, 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 you, you can do something more complex like control and, and say that during a disaster a certain number of people should um, behave as uh, instructed beforehand and do this and this and, and report to this and that. Um, to be available as extra man uh, to, um, to, to do services, to, to, to supply services before. But at least deriving information, so using as a, a perception label, this would be already a fantastic thing because uh, you, you won't have. I mean, everybody has a, a smartphone and uh, everybody tweets. And if there's, I don't know, uh, someone who, uh, who's a bomb uh, somewhere. Immediately there's a burst, a localized burst of, uh, or even something simpler, there's an accident, and, and then everyone starts communicating. If you are able to uh, tap into this information and get uh, a copy, so piggyback uh, on, on the tweets, in order to be notified of certain events or the emergence of a certain situation, then you can react quickly. Okay, another question is about uh, mm -hmm. how, how this system can make people involved more and more. And <coughs> I'm talking about that people uh, want to be involved in. Right. So how can this system manage that? This is a very important thing. Um, first of all, um, as you said, how can people e evolve? There must be um, sort of uh, education. So the, the system, um, the people, uh, must understand that the system is not to, to um, be executed the moment a hurricane strikes, but it's continuously uh, running, and uh, it requires people to comply to a common strategy. So, for instance, people need to run an applet in which they subscribe to the system and tell um, that this is a, print, a, a footprint of what I'm able to do. This is a, a, foot, a, a, a current view on my agenda and I tell you in green when I'm available for doing something for you. All this, this kind of stuff means that people also need to evolve their idea of, of cooperation. They, they have to, for instance, trade a share of their um, free time um, with extra safety. So um, consider California. California is a, is a very um, um, critical place, very nice, very beautiful, but the, there's this uh, problem of the uh, St. Andrews. Uh, um, and sooner or later, the big one is going to strike there. At some point, uh, there will be a big disaster. And then people will have to survive to different situations. So if in the schools, 
and, and uh, elsewhere, people are already now instructed that the thing is not something that is going in the future, but it's, it's, it's going now, it's going on now. And they have to simply learn what to do with the, in the disaster that sooner or later is going to strike. Then people are simply going to learn more and more. And, and, and also the service side is going to learn what to do. <clears throat> so simple things like uh, when something happens, you don't rush for the exit. You let, you, you check what is the flow in the three possible exits, and you try to, to, to get in an even way from the, the three possible uh, exits. What happened to Frank Zappa during the famous concert in uh, Montreux? There was a, a scene uh, which was um, um, in, in wood. Uh, you know that, that special wood which, uh, that is used to construct um, you know, you know, chairs by putting that, That's very inflammable. Yeah. And some stupid with a flare gun uh, shot uh, to, to the ceiling, and uh, uh, that become, became an inferno. And uh, the inferno would have been a real one if nobody would have uh, reacted, because there were only two exits. And all the people were going one on top of the other, and you know, that would have been worse than that. But Frank Zappa said, stop, be careful. Some of you go there, some of you go there. You open a third exit, and, and, and the people smashed uh, a wall uh, on the back. And then he, he created three flows, and the people got out without a scratch. Oh, I didn't know. It's quite heroic. <laughs> Frank Zappa. Yeah, he's a smart guy. <laughs> can expect less. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, a, it's a typical um, case in which society can be a problem or a solution to itself. It depends um, the way you orchestrate it. In that case, the emergency made it also possible to control the, the masses. Because he said, ah, stop. He was very calm. And, and then people if he's calm and he's there and it's even closer to the ceiling, <laughs> then we have to be calm as well. And he said, uh, um, calm, relax, we divide into different, sorry, yeah, and we go different ways. And, and everybody got out of you know, the scratch. The theater got burned down, and also the equipment. If you listen to the big part of uh, smoke on the smoke wall. On the wall yeah. That uh, is, uh, is exactly the story of, of that uh, smoke on the wall. It's a, <laughs> a stupid with a flare gun. Thanks. We burned uh, the river to the ground. Ah, my pleasure. <coughs> um, any other question? Uh, the, the question he asked actually ties in also with the point we have with the offer networks. So how do how to motivate. motivate people? Yeah. And, so uh, there are several ways, there are several things that motivate people. First, simple altruism. People are often willing to do things. The second one, the idea of the offer network that is you get something in return for doing something. So there's some kind of an exchange mechanism. And yeah. even if you do something now, that is not immediately rewarded, it's kind of entitled for a reward <coughs> nature. And the third one is a reputation system. Reputation. Yes. All the good things you do kind of increase your reputation, which makes you more in a priority to get later things done. Yeah, yeah, this is an important, important fact, an important and part of the mechanism. And there are a number of other psychological techniques which I <coughs> discussed in the paper mobilization systems. If you look at, for example, volunteers in open source communities, what motivates them? There have been some studies done of that, and reputation, altruism, uh, wanting to learn something. People often just want to do something because by doing <coughs> they learn something, they get feedback. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there, are, there are quite a number of motives that can be enhanced by the system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The system can reward with um, also by knowing better each people because. Uh, in a system like this, you receive also a footprint of. Um, you can get also an idea what 
are the motivations behind the action of the system. You can also use machine learning to, to learn for each of, of the individuals what would be the best award, <laughs> reward, sorry. Um, and um, that's because it's also what you mean by social energy. People are yes. willing to do things, yeah, and yeah. you need to harvest that energy. Exactly. Which at the moment is not done very well because of lack of coordination, because yeah. people are not aware that they can do these things because they're too complicated to do, etc. The only the only thing that works very nicely is um, um, it goes in the other direction. It's um, people that uses, ma make use of other people uh, by creating enemies. Like you said, uh, this is very, very effective. This is um, easy also to do. If you see, for instance, the case in Italy, there's a, a party that um, created an enemy, the immigrants. Yeah? The immigrants are the, the enemy. And, um, it doesn't matter that you don't see an enemy in all your uh, an, an, an immigrant in all your life, or uh, you have this enemy. It's it's something that creates cohesion, <laughs> um, and, and and it's also it's a very st strong way for the person to unify yeah, the, the people. It makes you feel complete again. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's unbelievable. So, but in this way, you don't use the energy. For, for the people, you use the energy of the people for your own yeah. sake. You steal the energy of the people. This is what uh, some, some politicians are doing uh, Many very actively. Are doing this also. Who? Many companies are doing Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Of course. Yes. Yes, please. I was just wondering why, why is it that, that say, for example, it's, it's much easier for people to latch on to this external enemy, say, as the immigrants or, or Mexicans or whoever, as opposed to global warming. Uh, yeah. As you could see, like yeah, global yeah. warming as abstract entity is the enemy that will unite, or, but that doesn't work. Yeah, you know, it's like strange. The, the planet doesn't, like, the, there's not like a global unity, ah, oh, we have to get this abstract. Uh, because the global warming uh, is not a monster. I mean, you, you, it's but, something I mean, in, in scientific, abstract in scientific, for them. Uh, in scientific representations of global warming, it, it, it's the ultimate monster. Yeah, yeah, true. But it's um, for, for the imagination of the people, uh, as you said. That's, that's what I'm saying. Why is it that that doesn't? Why doesn't it work? Like, because like that's what scientists are having trouble figuring out. Like, like. The scientists, are, it's almost like a, it's a crazy situation. Like the scientists are looking at the data, they're like, oh my God, this is so clear. The extrapolations are clear. Yeah. There's no more questions. We don't need to collect more data. We've got all the data. It tells us exactly what the problem is. But how the heck do we translate like this to, to the to a political sphere? How does social, how does the social body respond to this? There's no way to translate from the, the clear data to the social mobilization of... Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. Well, I think it, it, it depends on the, on the local situation. I think in Belgium, <coughs> people are more easily mobilized against global warming. I mean, we love it, but what here to say that yeah, we should do something about global warming. But there's warming. Let's not, install no such solar thing. panels. Mm -hmm. While in the US, there is the, the disinformation of the oil industry that that magnifies the voices of all these few. <coughs> Does these few dissident scientists that say that maybe the data can be interpreted in this way or in that way? So I think, the, I think the hatred. I think the hatred of the immigrants is a more authentic. It's it's form. a different. Like people more authentically emotion. say. It's easier to yeah. It's easier to hate something yeah. or to be afraid of something concrete, yeah, like yeah, a person, exactly. than of something. The general and abstract like yeah. global because uh, yeah, with the global warming you need to let to understand it. <laughs> with global warming you okay. you need to understand that's the yeah, 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 <laughs> with, uh, with an immigrant you say <laughs> okay he's stealing my natural, job. Natural, <laughs> you know, hatred. You know, like, oh, they, nothing they to think about. Maybe it's, we it's need to have global warming is stealing your job. Is <laughs> 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 uh, the is the actions? Yeah. I mean, a global warming would not steal your job, right? Well, global, no, even where global warming is raping your women. <laughs> 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 that's that's the, the immigrants are coming. Away from that. <laughs> just, you know, personalize it as a as like a like a kind of a monster. Do it 
Well, if global yeah. warming, yeah. Would, yeah. Yeah. if global warming yeah. maybe could make some fireworks explode so that people get killed like with bombs, when uh, global warming is. Let's talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> they could put um, some religion thing about global warming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Apocalyptic vision. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's the gods that are creating. Well, there's plenty of apocalyptic vision. Money too, money too is creating global. Even with uh, <laughs> even, even with the, there's more authentic mobilization energy for the for the one percent, for example, too. Like you, you can. It's, it's, human it's a better. It's a, yeah. It's yeah. somehow works. Yeah. Works, but the 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 environment is a totality that doesn't work. We need to personify. But on the other hand, if you use the ice bear and you have an ice bear sitting on a piece of 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 ice and the <laughs> is going to fall apart, then people can still The, 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 the poor bear in the ice. Oh poor bear. Yeah. <laughs> While bears can swim. I know. The bear's <laughs> probably enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, in that sense, it's not so bad what is happening. Because if Trump starts speaking for the... Yes, 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 global warming, yeah. which will be a like, face of the global <laughs> world, and then people like to contradict him <laughs> will like, you know, start It's okay. easy yeah. to hit Trump. So okay. In that respect, Trump is a very good figure <laughs> to mobilize people <laughs> so if everybody it's wants. Maybe all in all, great now. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. And what's this? And um. No, 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 it's my dream, I, I, I want to learn Japanese. Uh, Japanese. 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 Is the alphabet the same? No, 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 it, it's, um, it's, it's complex. Um, I mean, th there is a, a syllabic alphabet, which is uh, the one that is taught in elementary school, and then there's a a more uh, Chinese-like um, system with symbols that represents bigger why concepts. You, why do you want to say Japanese or Chinese? Chinese will be much more relevant. In I, I, I love Japan. <laughs> <laughs> I love everything Japan. Even their suicide rate? Uh, no, <laughs> 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 <It's a Not laughs> so. no. Also, also earthquakes are not very nice, but uh, okay. <laughs> but for the rest, I mean, it's a fantastic society where the individual and the society blend in a peculiar way. I mean, uh, the individual is individual, but it's also a part of society in a very special and peculiar way. And in what, uh, in what way? How is it, what's the peculiar uh, dimension? Um, if, if you do a, a television. Uh, drama or something, and you say, uh, and the characters uh, say, let's work together for a better system, for a better world, for a better city. In, in Europe, they would say, well, what's this? In, in Japan, is uh, these are the themes. I mean, the value of, of, of um, uh, I mean, I have the impression that people in, in Japan Thing. What can be good for me and what can be good for society? What can I do for society? At the same time, they, they have a mixture of things. They are a mixture of, uh, of East and West. They are a mixture of individual and social. They are a mixture of the best things. Japan has a ton of social problems. I know, I know. It's it, 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 could be the, it, could, it, could, it could be that the Japanese are more likely to fetishize cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> I know they do that. <laughs> Waifus and things like that. And <laughs> no, no, I like very much uh, social, the, the social culture of uh, Japan. Also, manga, anime. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. In Japan, I wanted to add something. Culture and the, the culture and the organization. And I think I taught it. I read something, some, some things about it uh, on the occasion of Fukushima. Yeah, yes, yes. Fukushima is they have neglected seriously certain very critical safety aspects. Yes. Very critical. The earthquake resilience. That failed completely. Yes, yes. And the reason 
well, I understood from, from what I read about it. The reason is uh, after the war, after the World war, after the, the atomic bombs, etc., that has uh, strongly motivated the Japanese to uh, their robotics and their car industry and their many other products. They had uh, very, very motivated to it. Now we will show the complete uh, globalized global society what we are able to do. Yeah. They were very, very motivated. And probably they still so like that now. That has seriously molded their mind yeah, uh, yeah. in a good sense. Yes, yes, yes. In a good sense. Uh, <coughs> yeah. But when two people, uh, when, when a person uh, has to leave another person that has to do something, uh, the expression that uh, they use is uh, do your best. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's normal. It's, it's the way to, to, uh, to interact. That um, the, the best thing for you is do what you can do best. And this is something. <coughs> Fukushima is still not less resolved. I know a little bit about it. I was some time in the nuclear industry. Uh -huh. But uh, it has also had other impacts in Germany, for example. The Energiewende in Germany, they left completely their nuclear power plants. They will, it will still take a time, but uh, in renewables, this has given a big impulse, impulse worldwide to the renewable energies, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, thank you. Uh, then we can go for a beer. Yeah. Oh, yes, a product. <laughs> 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 <laughs>